welcome and let's get started. We are going to learn how to do a single crochet. The first thing we're going to need is a crochet hook. I will be using a five millimeter crochet hook. You can hold the hook in your hand like a wand. You can use any kind of 100% cotton yarn. This is just a 50 gram ball. I like to try to pull my yarn from the center of the ball. This one came out very simple. Sometimes it's a little harder. Pull out enough yarn to get started. I will use the green color to make it easy to see. So with your yarn, we're gonna start by making a slip knot. Just make a loop and then pull your yarn from underneath up into that loop and pull. Insert your hook and pull snug. Make sure though that the loop is not too tight or too loose. You want to make sure that the hook is able to go through the loop. How to hold your yarn. Place the yarn over your pinky finger with your other fingers on top. We will then bring our hand towards us and bring the yarn over our index finger. And then we will close like a fist or as if you're pointing at someone. Holding the yarn in your hand like this will help with your tension. We can then take our thumb and our middle finger and we will hold the knot. We can now start with a chain stitch. We will rotate our hook so it faces upwards. We are then going to do a yarn over. So putting the hook down and having the yarn over our hook, this is how we will grab our yarn. That is a yarn over. We will then rotate our hook to the downwards position, so rotating it towards you, and we're going to bring it down and pull it through the loop. Once you have pulled it through the loop, you will rotate your hook back to the top going towards you. So pulling through, rotating up, and that is your first chain. Let's try that again. Yarn over, turn your hook downwards, through the loop, turn your hook back upwards. You can see how you can adjust your tension here. Let's continue doing our chain stitches. After you've done two or three, readjust your grip of your thumb and your middle finger. Remember, you can pause the video at any time. Your chain should now look something like this. You can always pull a little bit more yarn out of your ball to make sure that your tension stays nice and even. Remember to readjust your grip as often as is needed. Let's continue until we have made 21 chains or 21 stitches. We can now start our first row of the single crochet. So here we have the loop that's on the hook. This does not count as a stitch. Then we have our first stitch, which is here, and our second stitch here. So we're gonna start in the second stitch from the hook. We're gonna go underneath the top yarn or the first yarn right here. 
There are other loops in the back that you can go through as well, but today I will show you how to go into the top yarn. So into that top yarn, we will then yarn over and we will pull up one loop. You will now have two loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through both. This is a single crochet. We will then readjust our grip on the chain and we will go into the next chain stitch going underneath that top portion. And it's a good idea to have your finger behind kind of as a guide. If you don't, it moves around a little bit. So once the hook is through, yarn over, pull up one loop. You can then re-grip to go underneath that stitch and then yarn over and pull through two. Sometimes I will put my thumb on the loop that is around the hook just to help guide it. Looking for our next chain, we're going to insert our hook. Remember your finger is behind. Yarning over, pulling up that loop, readjusting your grip right there, and now yarning over and pulling through two. Again, looking at your stitches and readjusting the grip to find the next chain because we don't want it loose like this. Going into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, readjust your grip, yarn over, pull through two, and moving on to the next chain. As you can see, your hands are moving quite a bit back and forth as you go along finding each chain. This will give your work a much neater look and a cleaner tension, so your tension will be much better. Your single crochet will now look like this. You can see the very top of the stitches almost looks like a V at the top, and that is how you will know how many stitches you have made. Let's get a little bit more yarn so our tension is even, and we'll continue until the end of the row. You can see how sometimes I'll kind of wiggle the hook to get it into the stitch. This just helps if maybe the stitch is a little bit too tight. So you'll see here, sometimes you just have to wiggle it a little bit to get your hook in. So just wiggle and make sure you're just going under that one piece of yarn to finish your stitch. At the beginning, this is our slip knot, and then this is our last stitch. So we're gonna go into that last stitch right here. This is your first row. If you count the V's at the top, you should have 20. Our finished dishcloth is going to be about 6 inches by 6 inches or 15 centimeters by 15 centimeters. Don't worry too much about the size for your first project. I'm now going to show you how to get that straight edge. Here we are at the end of row one. We're now going to turn. So we're going to turn our work towards us just like this. So we're now going to work in the back of the stitch and our yarn will be behind us here. We will put our hook in the very first stitch, securing the loop on the hook with your thumb. So right in here, we will place our hook. 
So going in here, this time it'll be under two strands, and that's the V from the stitch below. We will then pull up our yarn and finish the single crochet. Working into the next stitch, again going right into this space here, so you can have a look to see that the V is there. So your hook is going underneath both strands of that V. And then yarning over, pulling up, and finishing your single crochet. Again, finding that space underneath the two strands of yarn and single crochet. Remember to readjust your grip as you go. Your stitches should now look like this. We are going to continue to do row two together. Make sure your hook is always going under both pieces of the yarn. Readjust your grip quite often and making sure you pull enough yarn so your tension is even. We now have two stitches to go. This will be stitch number 19 and then stitch 20. The last one can be a bit tricky. If you turn it towards you, you'll be able to make sure that you get under both strands of that yarn. So getting right in there for that last stitch and finishing our row. Make sure you have 20 single crochet in each row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. The loop on your hook is not a stitch. We can then turn our work. Turning towards you, we will again start in the first stitch. We will repeat row two until you have about six inches or 15 centimeters. I did about 20 rows. As you continue along with your dishcloth, you will find it's a lot easier to hold on to because there's more to grip and that the stitches are easier to make the same tension. You may find it easier to hold your yarn and hook differently than I do, or maybe do your stitch a little differently. 
I just think there is no right or wrong way to crochet. I hope I've inspired you today to start your first project and continue crocheting. We're at the last stitch here. Remember, it's always a little bit tricky and don't forget it. And there you go, another 20 stitches. Turn your work and we will start row four. I will see you at the end when you've done 20 rows. When you have reached your desired length, just cut your yarn, leaving about a six inch tail and pull through. We can then take our darning needle and we will weave in our ends. The reason I say to have a pointy ended darning needle, it's just because I like to weave my ends in kind of messy. So going in and out of the yarn. So not just going in and out of the stitches, but actually going in and out of the yarn. This makes for a really secure finish and your dishcloth will last for many washes. I like to weave my yarn in at least two or three times going back and forth to make the end very secure. Once I have gone down one way, I will turn around and I will go and weave it back in the other way. I will even go a third time back. When I am happy how I have weaved my end, I will use my scissors to clip. We can then weave in our starting end as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've learned something today and will continue the joy of crocheting. If you like this video, please be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that like button. Thanks so much for watching again, and we'll see you next time. Bye.